What's up guys, it's Zach Raccoon back with another video. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about the best budget streaming setup, which can be used for Zoom and just all of those type of things used as a webcam. And of course you have good audio with it as well. So what you can see right now is footage through this whole setup and it's going straight into my computer and I'm not recording it through OBS. Now, of course, there is quite a bit of latency with this setup and that's why I'm just recording it straight onto the camera, but I'll switch to the normal computer recording right now. So as you can see, this is a recording, just recording in OBS and this is what you'll be getting out of it. Now, there is quite a bit of lag in that, but in stuff like Zoom and that type of stuff, it's actually perfectly fine. So what am I using for this setup? Well, it's actually quite simple, really. All you need is a Canon camera and then a quite simple audio setup. And then I've also got a dummy battery in the Canon camera. So let's start off with the Canon camera. So the camera I'm using is the Canon 6D. This camera is from 2012 and it's a full frame camera which shoots in 1080p at up to 30 frames a second and of course 720p at 60 frames a second. And I'm shooting it at 24 frames a second right now. And it's, it's a very good camera for the price of only 600 Australian dollars. You get a really good camera with a great build quality. And I've done a full review of this camera. Now what I've got hooked up to it is a dummy battery battery which comes with a power supply and so I can pretty much just leave this camera on for as long as it goes until it overheats which this camera doesn't have an overheating problem at all because it's a big body so you can pretty much leave it on all day and then I've got it hooked up with a mini USB cable into my computer and then you can just use it as a webcam with the EOS webcam utility and as I showed earlier there is some latency but when using it for zoom and streaming and stuff like that Usually your camera is quite small, so people won't really be able to notice that type of stuff. So for the video department, it, as you can see, it does look really good. Now the lights I'm using is literally just a window light, so that's why it doesn't look the greatest. But I just wanted to show you a very budget-oriented setup. And window light is something that most people use when they're having a webcam. Now the advantage of using a full-frame camera is obviously you have a lot more background blur in the footage. As you can see, the background behind me is completely blurred out and everything. And I'm just using a $10 50mm f1.9 vintage lens, which I got from an op shop, and it works really well for this. Obviously, I have no autofocus, but if you set the focus right and you're pretty much sitting in the same position the whole time, it's going to be fine. But there's also another option. You can use a camera like this. This is a Canon 70D, and this has good video autofocus, and it only comes in at around 400 Australian dollars. Now, this camera has the exact same video specs as the Canon 6D, but it has proper dual pixel autofocus that Canon introduced. This was their first camera that had it. Now, the reason I use the Canon 6D over the 70D is because the Canon 70D is not a full frame camera. So the sensor is pretty much half the size of the Canon 6D, meaning its low light performance is a lot worse. And also you don't get as much of that lovely background blur because the sensor is smaller and it's cropping in more on the lens. So that's pretty much the camera side of things aside. Now we're gonna get onto the audio aspect of things and then we'll move on to the software. So for the audio side of things, I'm using the best budget microphone you can get. It's the Behringer XM8500. Now this microphone costs 35 Australian dollars and it's an absolute bargain. You're hearing the audio from it right now and this room that I'm in is a very echoey room. So obviously it, it's really good at reducing the background noise and that's what I really love about this microphone and what makes it so versatile meaning it's pretty much good for absolutely anyone and I can recommend it to anyone. Well, with the Behringer C1, which is my favorite budget microphone of all time, but it does have a bit more of an even sound signature. As you may have noticed with this microphone, it's a bit more bassy and it doesn't have much high end. Well, the Behringer C1 has a lot more high end and not as much bass, so it's a very even sound because it's a condenser microphone while well, this is a dynamic microphone. But of course, it's really up to you what you prefer, but I would say for a budget Zoom or streaming setup, this is definitely the best option to go with because it's gonna cut out all that background noise because it's a dynamic microphone. Now, I've got this on a white boom arm. It's a very simple one. You can pick them up for about 10 bucks, 10 Australian bucks on eBay. And then I've got it going through an XLR cable, which is one and a half meters long. That cost me 15 bucks. And that's going straight into the Behringer Euphoria UM2 interface. Now with this microphone and pretty much all XLR microphones, you're gonna need an interface or a mixer to plug into your computer so you can actually get good quality sound. If you plug this microphone in or any XLR microphone in with an XLR to USB cable, it's not gonna work. The sound will be very fuzzy and you won't get much signal out of it at all. And that's why it's just best to spend the $60 that it costs 
for the Behringer Euphoria UM2 interface and you'll have some nice, good, crisp sound quality. And to be honest, I can't complain at all with this interface. I've had it for three years, three or four years, and there's been no problems with it at all. And you can also plug in an instrument in there, and also you can plug in speakers and headphones so you get the full experience there. So let's talk about the software side of things. So the first thing you're gonna to have to do is download the EOS webcam utility, as I mentioned earlier. And once you've got that downloaded, pretty much straight away, as soon as you plug in your Canon camera, then you can use it on Zoom, on Discord, on Skype, on Messenger, or of course on OBS. Now for OBS, I simply just downloaded OBS and added a new device and set this camera up and it's recording at 1080p. That's all it takes really. Now if you have another brand of camera and you've already got it and you don't want to buy a Canon camera, then what you can do is grab a very cheap capture card. You can pick up one of these for about 20 bucks and what you get is a metal capture card that has a USB male on one end and a female HDMI on the other side. And then you can plug in a HDMI cable from the camera into the capture card. And this works surprisingly well, especially for that cheap price of 20 bucks for a capture card. I was actually really surprised when I used one of these. My friend had it and he gave me a go of it and it works really, really well. One thing though is that it doesn't work well with Canon cameras because Canon cameras only have a 720p video output from the HDMI port. Now this is for older cameras. Cameras like the Canon R5 and R6, of course they're going to have good output but for an older Canon camera, it will only have 720p. So that is quite annoying. That's why I'd recommend just using the EOS webcam utility. So anyway, this is the type of quality that you're going to be getting out of this setup, the audio, the video. But anyway, with all this out of the way, I hope you guys did enjoy the video. And if you did, smash a like button. If you didn't, smash the dislike button. Remember to subscribe to the channel. And also, if you have any video ideas or any videos you'd like me to, to do a video on, Drop it down in the comments below because I'm really open for any ideas because I've kind of run out. Also, you can join my Discord. It's in the description below. And over there, you'll be able to talk to me and give me any video ideas as well or any questions you have about this setup or any videos I've done in before. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.